Hello and welcome to this new series which I'm calling Pictures of the Week. Now I work as a picture editor for a national newspaper in the UK and I see literally thousands of pictures go across my computer screen every week. Many of them are quite similar because photographers will be covering the same news events and also the same sports events. But some images really do stand out as exceptional and in this series I'd like to show them to you because you may not have seen them in your newspapers, the magazines that you read, or the websites that you visit on a regular basis. Now the first picture I have to show you here really is a cracker. Surfing photography is always dramatic and dynamic, but it's very difficult to get the whole context of what's happening into a single frame. And Stu Gibson has taken a fantastic picture here which recently won the Nikon Surfing Photo of the Year Award. Shot at Shipstern Bluff off Tasmania, he has the surfer coming straight down the barrel towards us, literally cutting his way between the enormous natural energy of the sea and the immovable cliffs set on the right. It's this framing in this context that makes this a great picture. The surfer is in the eye of the storm, in control as he's being driven remorselessly by this overwhelming natural power to the rocks. Now Stu shot this on a full frame Nikon D4 with a 16mm lens. We can see some of the lens distortion in the cliffs on the right, but you don't notice any of that in the huge wall of water on the left. He shot it at f10 aperture, ensuring that there is a solid depth of field making the whole frame sharp enough for a natural view and for the viewer to be instantly immersed in the shot. Now this next picture was taken at the Bahrain Grand Prix meeting. Clive Mason is a really good all-round sports photographer and he works for the Getty Images press agency. Now Getty have clients all around the world. TV, websites, newspapers, magazines and corporate clients too. And so Clive has to try to satisfy as many of those briefs as possible. This means that he'll be taking feature pictures and portraits of the drivers, he'll be in the pits with the mechanics, he'll be taking pictures of the fans and the circuit and of course ultimately he'll be taking pictures of the race itself. Now this picture wouldn't really work for me as a picture editor for a newspaper because it wouldn't work very well in a newspaper, not least because of space restrictions that we tend to have in the press, but also the paper quality wouldn't really do it justice. But this picture would look fantastic in a magazine. There is a juxtaposition here between the fixed and static image of the car in the bottom corner and the dynamic motion of the rest of the image in the lower third. Whilst the foreground colors mix and blur, the night sky is constant, leaving the viewer intrigued. You know what this is, it's a Formula One car, but the image leaves you to imagine the where, why and how. This third photo is by Zikri Milana and is of traditional fishermen catching fish with their nets in Indonesia. It's actually a very clever use of silhouette, which allows the photographer to take a wide shot showing the beach, the fishing boat and the sea without worrying too much about the detail. The single line of men gives a perspective that suggests the centre of this picture is to the left, making the viewer more inquisitive about what could be just beyond the frame. Feature and travel photography can sometimes merely record what the photographer sees rather than try to engage the viewer in the experience. This is a really evocative shot, suggesting much more than is actually happening in the picture and is a clever use by the photographer of what is a quite limited set of components. A great sports picture captures a single split moment in time and sucks the viewer in to encourage them to wonder what will happen next. And this is a cracking photo from Charlie Crowhurst. This frame freezes time at the exact pivotal moment with the ball in mid-flight and both players committed. You can't look at this shot and not wonder how the next few moments will unfold. 
we are in exactly the same position as the crowd in the background who are bewitched by what is happening in front of them. Will they celebrate a goal or mourn a lost chance? At that split second, either is possible. And finally, this really lovely picture by Glasgow News and PR photographer Martin Shields, which he shot for the RSNO, the Royal Scottish National Orchestra. Now, PR pictures tend to be taken to supply to the media, whether they're newspapers or magazines or websites, in order to promote a launch, promote an event, or perhaps something more general like to accompany company results. And press officers tend to be very poor at thinking about what is going to constitute those pictures. Many PR officers seem to think that just by hiring a photographer, they will be able to provide astonishing pictures in eye-catching venues without any more forethought whatsoever. But here is a PR officer at the RSNO who applied some forethought and planning to help Martin create a really good picture. Now, the purpose of this picture was to promote a series of concerts that were themed around the Harry Potter films. And so the PR cleverly got in a Harry Potter lookalike. But the more important thing here is that he also got in a white owl. Because whether he realized this or not, the owl is important because it stands out against the dark robes of Harry Potter, who is standing in a church which itself is quite dark. And the owl is important because it catches the eye of the viewer so that it can draw the viewer in and see the rest of the image. And Martin must have been really pleased when he arrived to see that he had these components to play with. However, his skill is required to make the picture come together. It is shot in a church which is very dark and he's dealing with two people in dark clothes. Whilst the model and the owl are the main components of this picture, he also has to feature the cellist in the background, who of course visually represents the RSNO. Martin has set up three flash guns, one to his right to illuminate Harry Potter and the owl, one to his left closer to the cellist to illuminate her, and you can see the reflection of that flash in her cello, and one behind the cellist to make her stand out from the dark church background. Balancing all that light whilst making sure that the church windows and other details were still visible and contributed to the picture shows a photographer who really understands how to use lighting well. And all these elements together create a picture which is both eye-catching and tells the story. I do hope that you enjoyed looking at these pictures that were chosen this week. Please do look in the description and follow the links back to the photographers' pages to see more of their work. And I'll see you next time.